All right, first recorded run seen since Tosuke 6, and we're starting off Tosuke 8 with Halo Gamer. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Halo Gamers out there. I'm not sure why you'd stick with this gamer tag, but anyways, he's on the course. He landed on the first two obstacles. That's better than about 90% of people that have done this course. He does a save jump. Okay, clearly, never mind, make that 95%. He's done a save jump. He's actually getting through the steps and he's beaten the first obstacle, but now coast to coast, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's been nerfed, obviously with that new uh, middle platform and he uses it. And not many people actually get to the third obstacle, which is the broken track. He jumps on it, he jumps off of it and he touches the track, which would result in a disqualification of, he doesn't care, he dies anyway. Now we're on to Martin 147912. I should have just said phone lock combination. Up oh, there it is. We always start off decent and then it deforms into this. I didn't even say his name. And he's already gone. And there's some other dude who also is gone. I'd love to talk about these names, but I can't even say it. Team Turner Boop, gone. Two seconds. Not even two seconds. It was more like a second but now we have bart shovel and for the first time in three runs i can say a name because he waited at the start and that's some guy who is dead and bart is going to follow him as he's also dead don't worry there's more of where that came from but now we're on to radio jaja oh no look he's flying oh he's dying never mind he was flying for a second and now it's something called a uh, run cut or something i don't know mid run cut because he was taking forever on the first obstacle, but he beat it, and he somehow beats the second obstacle, which is like, for Aranda, it was like, I don't know, total victory at this point. But at least he tries to land on the ball. He doesn't, but he tried. And now, uh, our first notable, and I put notable in quotations, brackets, anything, it's Mania Spade, no longer Spade Plot 10, and it's not the name is terrible and I have to admit yes it was pretty bad so we went with Mania Spade instead making his a uh, fifth appearance I am unsure he's making appearances all right he's failed the first obstacle twice and uh, he's made he's about to attempt the course with a rocket launcher all right it's gone buddy it despawned all right now he's off he's failed the first obstacle twice he's failed this jump before doesn't do it this time. The furthest he's made it, uh, I think, is the coast to coast, which is made easier, so maybe he can get a new personal best. Beats the first obstacle. Now it's this one. It's still a killer somehow, but he at least uses it, and now he has a new personal best as he almost kills himself off the side. That would have been one of the worst fails yet. Now he's looking at the ball, he definitely doesn't know how to do this one. But at least he knows he has to jump onto it, he fails to. He's on it, he's actually staying on the ball. Oh, never mind, he's off the ball. He gets hit by the ball, you deserve it. I mean, what? But you know you're going to be in for a good tournament when someone like Spade is in first place at the current moment. But anti Cold here is doing good, never mind. He went in between the space. I don't know how he did that. And spoiler, this is going to be our last run before we go into a fast forward because it doesn't get much better than this. Speaking of the fast forward, here it is! The fast forward of amazing competitors doing amazing thing. X Doobie Doob Dukes did the thing where he touched the track of the ball, uh, broken track, and he waited around for a bit before eventually running off to his death, as per usual. Dramatic Fog 75 was next, and despite landing the second step, he chose to walk right back off. And then Yasso 92, I guess, uh, had his band of misfits watch him fail the ball. He landed on the track and fell off anyway. And no, his friends did not fare any better. Fluffy Big Head was next, and uh, despite it being easier, he still failed the coast to coast, missing the middle run. And then TTV Diego 3369. You can go look at it if you want. 
also missed the middle portion somehow. And then I'm not even going to try to say his name as it's raining dead people apparently. And then Chiquito Pro looked like a bro actually for the first two obstacles. And, uh, and then he ran to the broken track and though he jumped onto it, he didn't exactly stay on it as he'd fall onto the track and fail jumping to the ball. Queen Pillar 270 was next and he also did the thing where he pushed the ball away, waited for a second and just ended up running onto the track and dying himself. Maybe I should just change the obstacle so you have to do that. And finally, Ace with three E's 2013 who stood here for an undetermined amount of time. It was too long, just so you know. So I skipped his entire run until he got lost on what to do with the ball. I don't know how he didn't push the ball either direction until now. And he also fell and did the thing. That thing. So 19 runners, still nobody passed the third obstacle. Maybe uh, Mr. Jozu9393 can be the one to do it. No, nope, never mind. I don't even know if I pronounced the game exactly but Jozu? Jo whatever. Next up, uh, Cypher Cory with an extremely mangled name. I, I want to break this down, right? He has a three replacing the oh, Never mind, he's gone too. Alright. Web garlic seven 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 two two. I don't care. All right, I already messed it up once. Doesn't matter now. He's going. He's he's not going anymore. He's dead. All right. Cross check zero zero six already on the steps. I thought this name was pretty cool. Not going to be honest. Wait. I'm not going to be. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. All right. But anyways, he's to the broken track. Uh, will he at least get on the ball? He does. And he's actually doing it correctly, unlike so many others. Oh, P's gone. I think that's his other dead body there. Huh? Now, Baby Reaper 4297 is up. Unfortunately, not Soul Reaper. Couldn't get him. I don't think I'm ever going to get him. So, I got the next best thing. I think, at least, as he does a 360, I'm pretty sure. He almost falls off on the third step. As you can see me in the background, if you care. And now he's looking at me. Can we at least get off the obstacle before falling? Yes, he does. Now on to uh, coast to coast. Eventually, he decides to do the course again. Yep, there you go. Surprisingly, he hasn't taken out many, even though I still thought more would fail it, even with that middle edition. And now, he's going to send the ball to the grave. And how much you want to bet he's going to walk on the track? Yeah, there it is. And he's shooting the ball, it, it's not going to go anywhere. It, he's definitely not going to make that jump. I should really change that obstacle with how many people are doing that. And next up, XX Deadshot XX747. Quite the gamer tags that uh, forced me to say a lot of words. Or letters, actually. But he's through the thin tumble steps. Well, they're not really that thin anymore, but I'm still calling them that. Past the coast to coast, and now the broken track, which is basically taking out everybody so far. And he punches it, punches it again. Literally nobody likes the ball, you have to use the ball hole. You can't even make it on the track, as I said. And now Thick Tackle 3, quite the name, and he's gone already. Alright. Fantastic. And next, Knight Luna 1, with two zeros replacing the O's. Yeah, this tournament is going by pretty fast so far. We're already past halfway through because I'm forced to get 49 runs and not 50 because I was stupid and lost all the runs last time. Remember that? Remember when Tosuke 7 wasn't a thing? Then I had to do a whole recap. Yeah, that was fun. But Luna missing a platform jump is on the broken track. Will they get on it? No, not really. Are they going to walk on the track? 
they, they're gearing up to. Nope. They're just going to take a little rest, I guess. Wait for it to respond. Oh my goodness, someone actually was waiting for the ball to respond? That's like unheard of or unseen on this course, basically. Now they're going. Oh, uh, well, they tried to wrangle, I think. And let's go right back to our fast forwards because, as you know, everybody is good on this course. DB Brigade 01 tried to wrangle it on the broken track and didn't exactly work. And spoiler, you're going to see a lot of this third option. But as I say that, Bear 5829 didn't even reach the obstacle. And then Dory Dorisaurus RX, I'm pretty sure, just touches the track. And he tries to get back on and continue. Doesn't exactly work. Big time gamer 78. I think that counts as a DQ, but as you all know, he just goes for it anyways. And speaking of going for it, Hanzo decides to join him. Yes, that was an actual run as well. And then Mason Man, a name I also enjoy for some reason. Unfortunately, did the very best thing of not waiting for the ball and going for the long jump. Didn't work either. Then XX Blitz Gael, or is it Blitz Dow? I'm not sure, but he actually put on one of the best performances so far as he actually attempts the jump but comes up short. Probably would have made it if he crouched. Next was Rocket Dog 43390. And he did this badass thing where he actually stopped the ball. And if he got that, I would have ended the tournament right there. I don't even care what it would have happened next. And then next was Rogue Davalaz 0307, which with all the numbers at the end of these names. He actually gets decently far on the track, but he also falls off. And then so got Mox. I don't know if he's asking me a question or something, but he does this, whatever that is. He struggled and dies. And finally, Sebastian7174, again with the numbers, doesn't even get that far off the track and he falls. And as much as I hate to fast forward this next run, up next was Rusty Dover 26 returning from Tosque 5 and not only did he get a new personal best but he became the first person in this tournament to beat the broken track. And another unfortunate thing, he then proceeded to stand here for the rest of his time and would time out on this obstacle. I mean after the time he'd fail the first jump anyways but still now we're going through our final nine runs without a clear still, as expected on this course. That ends our random runs on kind of a good note. But now we're on to Hill Galactic. I really haven't seen him on courses that often, but I think he's new to jumping. But I had him I got him to do a run. His practice didn't go the best, but he hopes he can at least get past the first obstacle. And he is off onto the thin tuple steps, which really aren't that thin anymore. He struggled with this in practice, but he's handling it fine so far. And as I say that, he is in fact in the water. Caden Bogard, formerly Glitch G Sucks, and Caden, uh, returning for his fourth appearance. He's failed the stage one in the last three attempts, but I say he's really improved as a jumper. I don't know all of his results since then, but you can see as he jumps, he's improved from 
before. So, I want to say he has a shot. As he takes the middle part on the coast to coast onto the broken track, he was worried about this obstacle. Balance obstacles give me two. He's rolling it pretty nicely, but he gets a late sprint and doesn't make it. Now, another regular. Don't worry, I'll make sure to uh, spread them out and run over next time. It's CJG Gaming YT, also known as It's Foamy. He changed his name to this. He is one of five to have been in every tournament, and though he's the only one to have not beaten stage one, he still continues to come back. And maybe one one of these days we'll see Foamy on stage two. It's uh, it's a gun. It's probably going to be a thing where, despite him changing his name, I'm going to refer to him as his old name, even though I still call Joey Baze at least 80% of the time in Irish Crown Ferret. But that's beside the point. There goes Fomi on stage one. Much faster. Well, he was much faster on the steps, but he paused a little there as he does the coast to coast skip. I say coast to coast skip. But you know, now the broken track, he's failed this, I think, twice. Well, he's failed it three times before, actually. But this time, Foamy has gotten it. And believe this or not, oh, he actually lands on it. Believe this or not, Foamy is now in first place. As he goes for the jump, oh my god, Foamy almost did it. And he walked off. That hurt. He was so close to reaching the point. But now someone making his fifth appearance also making the clear for their first time. Super Ninja Jake 2. He's in stage one on uh Halo Ninja where part of the has yet to do it here. Because he has quite the intro. He actually finished in sixth place three times in a row before last turn. He ended up failing the butterfly wall. It wasn't the greatest failure, let me tell you that. But uh, Jake does have speed on this course most of the time. So let's see if he can become our first clear as he skips two steps there. Skips the middle platform on the coast to coast onto the broken track. He doesn't have to do much to get first place at this point in time. As he goes right into the butterfly wall. Will he stick it? Nope, goes straight for the third, and now Jake is in first place. And now you can finally see the back half of this course. It only took 44 runs for that to happen. But Jake threw the half ring, and now he's on to the, I think I call this the windows. It's something, frame hang, oh my goodness, that was a, a plus in the Save Jump Academy. He definitely passed his class. That was a great save jump, as not up the Great Wall in one, though. Up it in two, yep. The time limit is lenient enough for you to take a couple of attempts at that. And he sticks the flying ring. Gonna go do the flying ring the great way, which is not try and go at it sideways. He slides his way into the needle climb, and with 30 seconds, Jake looks like he will be the first to defeat this stage one and get his first clear on this course as long as he doesn't slip through any of the cracks here. And it doesn't look like he will. Jake, a little, oh, a little hiccup there, but Jake will clear stage one with nine seconds remaining. He is our first clear and our first reported clear since Task A6. He is very happy as you can see. Now let's hope our next runner can continue that success. Hello everyone and welcome to Tournament 16 of Irish Warrior. In the last tournament, we saw six competitors get by stage one and then host of Irish Warrior, Crown Ferret 19, aka Irish 1200, has beaten stage one twice before, hasn't been back there though since Tosuke 3 and in the last tournament he 
had a disappointing run in which he failed the butterflies. Now he hopes to do much better and follow up what Jake did. As he's breezing, sort of breezing through the fifth double steps, takes a skip there. Not many have skipped to the second one, which is possible. Now onto the broken track. Does it perfectly, and now he's going to look like he's going to take it slow on the butterfly descent. Don't want to fail it like he did prior. Oh, he goes straight for it. I thought he was going to stop on it. Now on to the half free. Not going to full send it either. Ooh, that was close there. It looks like he's going to go for the dismount and he gets it. Now on to the frame hang, I had to say. Irish, with 50 seconds left, usually you want to be nearing the warp wall, which he is right now. There's Snaz. Unfortunately, he didn't run, but he at least watched Irish take on stage one. Irish up the wall in one. Irish looking good, but he has failed the orb climb as Snaz jumps in the frame there. He has failed the orb climb, but it's the needle climb now. It doesn't look like Irish has to worry, as not many have failed this. Iris climbing up as the camera almost misses him there. And it looks like Iris will defeat stage one with 12 seconds remaining. Iris back on stage two. He is happy as he's trying to punch the buzzer again, but it's just not coming back. Yeah, he is excited to be back on stage two. And I'm happy for him. But next, Tricky Cyrus, who's been to stage two also, but his best placement is second place, which was two tournaments ago. And Tricky unfortunately fell early previously in the butterfly descent, where he got hit by the pole. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. Two tournaments in a row where Tricky finished in the top three. Unfortunately, that didn't happen last time. Let's see if he can get back to stage two and possibly stage three since he failed the speed bump, which was the fourth obstacle of five. Easily through the first two, and he's going to wrangle the broken track. A uh, fast pace here by Tricky, I think the fastest thus far. Does thankfully he got past the obstacle that he failed before and now up the half where he full sent it into the second but he's gonna take his time from the second to the third. Now the window hang here. Or frame hang. It's one of these. You'll see the windows later, I'm sure. But tricky a minute left as he's just getting off the frame hang. You see as I change the name of it twice, because why not? Tricky, not up the Great Wall in one. Will he get up it in two? Nope, not up it in two. He still has 45 seconds left, up it in three, which is still enough time to clear. Time limit is pretty lenient if you can get up that wall in a reasonable amount of time, as Tricky barely overshoots the flying ring. And he is out on stage one again. And now to someone else who's also failed at the flying ring before, the Sonic Fan 10193. It took him three attempts before he could defeat stage one, and at that tournament three, he reached stage three. But he hasn't been back there since. He has cleared stage one twice, and that includes the previous tournament, also tournament four. He was one of many to fail Crank It Up and one of the many haters of that set obstacle. So that's why I replaced it. So uh, let's see if Sonic can uh, reach stage two again and possibly stage three for the first time in a while. Because he also skips some steps. Sonic will most likely breeze through these first few obstacles if he doesn't end up failing them. Not going to wrangle the broken track though, which is going to go for a standard roll here. Pretty a little slow, but he's off of it straight into the butterfly descent. No problem for him. Now the half ring. Is he going to full send it? Yup, he is living to the name in Sonic there. Now the frame hang. I'll just call it that permanently so I don't switch like an idiot. 
He's gonna get a good sprint off the wall, and with a minute, he is onto the warp wall. That is the amount of time that you want to have if you don't get up the wall in one, which he does. Now, he has failed this before, but he just goes straight for it this time instead of doing what he did before. And with 45 seconds, Sonic is on pace to destroy this stage one. As long as he doesn't have any slips up, slips up, pink slip, whatever. And he hits a spring jump. Who is this? Sonic defeats stage one with 29 seconds remaining. He absolutely massacres the stage. Like I said, you get up that wall in one, you're good on time most of the time. Anyways, we're on to our first all-star Petrillo fan for it's almost a tale of two halves with him. In the first four tournaments, he never failed stage one, and he reached stage three three times in a row, and the final obstacle of stage three twice in a row, including being two jumps away from the final stage, but since then he has not been back to stage three. In tournament five, he failed stage one for his first time, then failed it again in tournament six, he beat stage one in the previous tournament, but ended up failing stage two as he goes straight for the second one. I think he's the first one to do that this tournament. Petrillo is an all-star. He still puts up good performances on other courses. Let's hope Petrillo can get back to stage three this time around. Uh, so far, he's speeding through the obstacles right now with a similar pace to Sonic. He's on to the half ring. Looks like he's also going to full send through it all. Now on the frame hang. You want to, you don't need to sprint for these jumps, but you can if you want to. As Petrillo, still on a similar pace to Sonic as he has a minute left heading into this great wall. But will he be able to get up it in one? Nope, he bumps into it. But with 50 seconds left, he has enough time to burn a couple of Tims, but you do not want to take too long. Not up it in three, Petrillo. Really struggling with this great wall. Four attempts. He has timed out on stage one before. He's up it in five, but 35 seconds left. It is enough time, but he really didn't want to take that many attempts at the wall. As he makes his long journey, his damn trek to the needle climb. 20 seconds left is enough time to clear. Unless he makes a mistake, he might cut it a bit close, but it looks like Petrillo will be returning to stage two again as he is really taking his time. He doesn't have that much left, but Petrillo is up. And with three seconds left, Petrillo defeats stage one. It's surprising that he had so little time left that that's what happens when you fail the great wall a bit too many times. But still, as long as he had time left, he defeats stage one as the cameraman is lost on where Petrillo went. And finally, of course, number 49, you already know it was going to be Joey. Abizia, Vaze, Joey Davis, whichever, whoever. I'll still probably call them Vaze and Joey most of the time, but you already know. Been to stage three in every tournament, finished in first place in almost every tournament except one. He's been last man standing more times. Hasn't failed stage one, stage two, and of course, the most important thing, achieved total victory in Tosca 4. So, unless he fails stage one 50 times in a row, or unless someone else achieves total victory, there's no way Vaze isn't going to be uh, our last runner every tournament. He has someone to contend with, though, as Sonic beats stage one with almost 30 seconds remaining. And, you know, Joey likes to go pretty fast on this course as he skips the first one on the coast to coast. He has the speed record on stage one. Not on stage two, though. Still looking for that one. But Joey, you know, he's been to the final stage on a lot of courses. Ninjas of Halo, Halo Sasuke, uh... There's others, I'm pretty sure, but you know. Oh, a Spartan Ninja Warrior, pretty sure. And as I'm talking, Joey is on the frame, hey? Looks like he's gonna take his time, and by take his time, I mean get his bearing. He goes straight for the dismount. And Joey with a minute left as he hits the Great Wall. Up and in one, nope. Not up and in one. 
If he got up in him one, I'm pretty sure Joey would have had that fastest time on walk. But now, it looks like it's going to be a bit close as he has 45 seconds going to it. And I think Sonic Fan had 45 seconds getting on to it. But I'm sure at this point in time, he doesn't care about his time. He just wants to beat stage one. Unless he springs jump it, nope. And Avizia will also defeat stage one with 29 seconds left. And if I didn't tell you, you'd never know. But Sonic was actually faster. As he had 29.97 and Joey had 29.66. So Sonic was faster, but not by much. It's not every day you don't see Joey at the top of this list, but we have five clears. It's not the most, but it's not the least. It's about in the middle. Our first clear was Super Ninja Jake, who was the only one clear for his first time in this group. Next was Iris, aka Crown Fair, clearing for his third time. Next was Sonic Fan, clearing stage one for his first time since Tournament 4. Then it was Patrillo Fan for making a return to stage 2 again. And finally, for the eighth time in a row, eighth time in a row, Avizia, Vaze, Joey Davis, whichever you want. All five are moving on to stage two, which we actually get to see now.